Seriously, this movie opens with a soundless touchstone pictures logo. Then, after the second logo features eight straight seconds of black. The sucker is actively trying to make me think something's wrong with the Blu-ray. The story you are about to see has been told before. A lot. Narration. Unfortunately, before we begin, there is a rather long, boring prologue, which I will read to you now. You mean longer and more boringer than already? This play on to be or not to be is clever, but it represents the high watermark for the humor in this movie. So I'm sending the fact that it's all downhill from here. You wise no hag. You crumbly old codger. If these two hate each other this much, wouldn't they just wait till the other left so they didn't have to see them? I mean, I look around a good three minutes when I venture out to get the mail, just to make sure I don't accidentally partake in human contact. Considering the contextual clues, I'm placing this in England, meaning Team Red is the one driving on the wrong side of the road, and I'm now firmly on Team Monta Blue. Also, crazy complicated color coordination clearly created to convey contentious character combat conveniently. Oh, great. Why is the sprinkler loom so upset here? Isn't this her sole purpose in the garden? Yes, you definitely signed up to see an old-ass gnome dressed in a Borat-style onesie thong when you decided this was the best use of your monthly weekend with your kids. I got one! I got one! Oh. Damn it, why are so many of these assholes upset about their essential functions? Little known fact, this snail abuse officially started the Snail No Wars, eventually resulting in the mysterious deaths of Blue Pock and Biggie Snails, and also resulting in the 2013 classic Turbo. Make up your mind, movie. Earlier characters couldn't separate themselves from their props, so why can Tybalt just get off that wheelbarrow? <laughs> the Gnome Lick Maneuver. Oh, those blues are at it again. That's bluesist, and the first of many times I could make a that's racist pun in this movie. Why does it take Juliet so long to come to life? I mean, the rest of these f***ers have been running around for several minutes. That tree was your father's pride and joy. Wow, Miss Montague seriously has a toilet with a tree growing out of it right in her yard. Is this suburban England or rural Alabama? Also, much like a Cars movie, I'm forced to consider how these gnomes procreate. Do they have sex organs? We hear them clink against each other throughout the movie. So how would bumping uglies work without breaking off? I know, my chores. No, me Edging, no. trimming, planting. Okay, so in this universe, the garden gnomes maintain the front yard. Fine. But we've seen that the humans aren't aware of their sentience. So how do they think all that shit gets done? Are they paying a dude named Brent to do lawn maintenance and he's just pocketing that cash without doing shit? F***ing Brent. What an asshole. So rather than watching and trying to catch her, you're hiding your face from your oncoming daughter shrapnel. Someone just lost their shot at the Better Gnomes and Gardens Father of the Year Award. You're delicate. I'm not delicate. Precocious young female is held back by the man until she proves that she should be allowed to kick ass in an animated kids movie cliche. She's definitely not delicate. Delicate? Hmm. I'll show him who's delicate. Man, I delicate hope delicate. All this delicate repetition delicate doesn't delicate have any delicate impact delicate on my delicate writing delicate from this delicate point delicate on. Delicate. Romeo, Romeo, Tibble go, Tibble go, Tibble go. Did they just say Tybalt go? Just so they could rhyme with Nomeo? That's the lamest rhyming I've heard since the summer of 99 when LFO tried to rhyme Hornet with Sonnet. Y'all know the rules and I don't what the sh movie? You get Dolly freaking Parton to voice a part, and this is all you give her? And her character's name is Dolly Gnome. Did she intimidate all the creativity out of you? Jeez, the first seven minutes of this movie features several Elton John songs. And here I thought Kingsman 2 was the most egregious use of his music. They've been racing in a straight line for quite a while now. So are they, like, in Wales at this point? Wait, is Wales connected to England? Damn. I don't know f about the UK. Also, zero humans in the adjacent homes notice this very loud lawnmower chase. Damn it, not every animated movie is required to have one of these slow mo reaction shots. Damn it. So far, we have objects coming alive from Toy Story, the daughter won't play her role from Brave, and now lightnings jump over the car finish from cars. Only eight minutes in, and I think I've already won my game of Pixar Bingo. <laughs> Seriously? What driver actually runs into a fing lawnmower and doesn't even slow down? True. Let's go kick some grass. Nope, not even having the animated mushroom shaking its head at this ridiculous pun excuses it from being in the script. Be free. Oh, thank you. Funny joke and all, but why wouldn't the fish be able to swim? The gnomes are moving all sorts of limbs, and the frog jumps around like she's a rubber chicken. So why does the fish have a case of early onset rigor mortis? I'm hoping Juliet's rod robbery here is some kind of feminist commentary, but I'm also probably asking way too much of the slapdash Shakespearean knockoff. Nice junk in the trunk. Even if the garden denizens picked up English from hearing the Capulets talk, when the hell would this phrase ever be used by a wrinkly old English dude unless his name is Piers Morgan? I'm thinking of a movie. It's one word, and it starts with spider. Is it Spider-Man? We would have also accepted 2004's Spider, 2000's Spiders, and 2010's Spider-Hole. First off, where the hell did these lasers come from? They definitely didn't dissuade Nanette from bouncing all over the yard a minute ago. Second off, why the hell did they need this much f***ing security? 
I know they're in a feud with the Montagues, but there's like holes in the f***ing fence that they could get through. Hiding things behind a fence only works if it's a solid fence, at least according to my neighbor's indecent exposure suit. Great! I love going commando! Oh great, this is all leading to gnome dick jokes, isn't it? This goes on for so long that I'm actively rooting for Tybalt to use his heaviest rock on this little asshole. Get them, you idiot! But you're standing right f***ing next to them. Nothing but daisies here. This works. Wheelbarrowing. Also, how is doing this any better? Wouldn't Capulet know he never had a strange wheelbarrow gnome? Especially one that's blue in an all red yard? Sure, maybe the spring from the laundry line would get Nomeo over the fence, but he's like 30 feet above the house. What kind of juiced up elastic is in these boxers? Ain't life a man a splendor thing? Jeez, Elton John again? Is this Nomeo and Juliet or the Lion King? Luckily for the visibility of the scene, Juliet waited for a Bruce Almighty move before she pulled her stunt. Damn dude, I know she's a gnome, but upskirting is upskirting. This heart-shaped flower is also the color purple, which is red and blue together, because you should never settle for one layer of obvious symbolism when you can beat the audience over the head with two. Also, I know this symbolizes the meat cute, but why is Nomeo even reaching for this flower? He had no knowledge of it until this very moment. Who's your Nomi? Who's your Nomi? Whoa! Who's you know me now? I'm not kidding. Including the obligatory Shakespeare credit, there are 16 goddamn writers on this movie. And this dialogue is what we ended up with. Is any of this movement possible within the laws of physics, you ask, movie? F*** you and physics. It's about f***ing gnomes, movie replies. It just can't be. So it's a doomed love. This overdramatic monologue from a minor character goes on for so long that I half expected the frog to be voiced by Kevin Hart. Haven't these two clans avoided each other for many years? Then why is it so goddamn easy to get in and out of the gates? I wish I could quit ya. I couldn't have said it better myself! So ten minutes ago he had to go full camo and sneak over the fence and dodge lasers to get in here. But now he just waltzes in at full volume even after security orders the code red. Turn it off! Not only does it take forever for any of the gnome leadership to notice this gregarious light show, it doesn't awaken a single human. Ooh, you look like a fun guy! Terrible pun notwithstanding, I'm pretty sure this means she wants to f*** that mushroom. Parting is such sweet sorrow. Wait, Nomeo had to use some sort of contraption to release the latch of the gate door. So how does Nanette do it so easily without leaving the ground? How could she do this to Tybalt's wishing well? This is an excellent question, since even if these two despise each other, it's extremely unlikely that a geriatric neighbor would sneak into Capulet's garden and tag his yard art. Okay, so if the gnomes are cleaning this graffiti off after Capulet sees it, how does he think it gets done? What are the f***ing rules in this f***ing universe? Yeah, 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 we get it. The banana is a play on apple, but it's a lazy one. Where's the bite out of it? Why is it yellow instead of lit up? Where's the planned obsolescence and the overpriced replacements? <laughs> the NSA. Is your movie too short to be considered feature length? But you've run out of animation money? Don't worry, just do a three minute unnecessary montage of gnome self care, but without rendering any backgrounds for it. Sure, the style will feel like nothing else in the entire movie, and completely out of place, but at least it'll make the movie seem longer and cheaper. It's a 1950s McAllister Ranger! One of the most annoying parts of this movie is the fact that the gnomes have a tremendous amount of real world knowledge with no explanation for how they could possibly obtain it. Casual breaking and entering is extremely casual. <coughs> <coughs> Why are they f***ing coughing? They're f***ing gnomes, damn it! They don't have f***ing lungs! God, this movie's stupid! Do you know what it's like to be trapped for 20 years? Glad this movie made some room for its own personal Jar Jar. <laughs> this mower's been sitting outside unattended for several years, but all it needs is a little gas, I mean petrol, to get it functioning perfectly. Your father planted her. And I guess Miss Montague just walked out, saw a beautiful flower that she didn't plant, and figured, f*** it, I guess that's how things work. I'd buy a big house where... Sorry to put a damper on this amphibian beauty moment, but Paris does realize this all ends with a gun to the back of his pointy cap, right? No cloaca is worth that, Paris. No cloaca at all. Also, the only way this could get more uncomfortable is if Kevin Spacey were actually involved. <laughs> this poor half-headed hippo is sentient? This universe is dark, man. Is that your big move on a second date? You wine them, dine them, and then spray them with weed killer? Well, I've never called it weed killer before, but if that's what you're into. Sometimes I get a little overexcited, but I know I can be a bit uh, much. Whoa, 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 movie, are you seriously trying to Pixar me right now with a second tier comic relief character we just met five minutes ago? The only tears you're pulling here are from that giant yawn I just let out. Wait, Featherstone. Hey! Come back! You know, for a short-ass kids movie, this sucker has a million subplots, and none of them go anywhere. Remember Juliet's dad setting her up with Paris? Remember the frog that wants to bone him? How about the conflict between Nomeo and his mom? The lawnmower race? The wisteria murder? I may not be a smart bird, 
but I know what love is. This forced Forrest Gump quote leads us to a picture beautifully composed to give us all the movie information we need. But exactly what kind of stalker is responsible for actually taking this picture? And how exactly did it get here? And this one too! Guys, I know the movie wants us to believe we're seeing a love story right now, but this feels much more like a murder wall to me. Featherstone's got some sick secrets that I'm not ready to learn. The movie tries to give us an up-style relationship montage about a couple that's not even featured in the f***ing movie. Rosencrantz and Guildenstern movers? As you like it, Hall? Movie tries to Shakespeare reference so hard it might pull a Hamlet. Well, that escalated quickly. So, are they gonna do it right in front of the mushroom and the flamingo? What was that? What's happened? Red Brick and Blueberry just ask this now, after the extremely loud lawnmower battle. Smash him back! <gasps> Run, Nomeo! Damn, does Nomeo have nobody from the Blues to come to his defense? The entire Red Army is attacking, and his only recourse is to make like Monty Python and run away? <laughs> wow, they really did it. They went full tragedy and killed Nomeo. Because they certainly wouldn't pull some convenient nonsense where the exact truck that hit him just happens to also be carrying ceramic blue teapots falling out of the back because somehow the back door's... Oh, God damn it! F*** the humans in this movie. Like this driver, who casually passes by while the sentient gnomes are sentienting right out in the open. What happened to the traffic on this road? Two minutes ago, it was full speed, all lanes. But now Magic Mushroom over there has been hanging out in the middle of the street for at least 30 seconds, and not a single vehicle's been seen. Either Stratford-upon-Avon has the shortest rush hour in history, or that's some great able sh There is no way Nomeo wouldn't have noticed this giant creature breathing above him well before that slobber hit his face. <sighs> exactly what kind of work is being done where this loader's bucket is left completely submerged for this long? Also, how does Nomeo not see this machine before it lifts him? Aw oh, man, Juliet got in so much trouble that her dad went and crangled her. This rain begins to fall when the main character is sad cliché is so cliché I'm half expecting to hear Elton John's cover of Hallelujah. Even though Miss Montague already selected the weaker lawnmower and moved on with her life, the ad for the Terra Furminator is still front and center on her screen. That's a very aggressive pop-up. If you have your washing machine connected to a sewer line big enough for a garden gnome to Shawshank through, you're appliancing wrong. <laughs> Benny and the computer survived this. Call me. What is with the characters in this movie? Apparently everyone is immediately down to f***. One word! Plastic. Deus ex plastica. So the delivery driver dropped this mower off, took it out of the box, assembled that shit, then left it in the middle of the yard even though Miss Montague wasn't home? Man, England is weird. Unleash the dogs of war! This Julius Caesar reference would be a lot cooler if it made any sense whatsoever for her to be saying it. Julius! You're alive! Yeah, which reminds me, why didn't anyone except the shroom go out and at least gather what they thought were Nomeo's remains? Which would lead them to see that it was a teapot. That would have saved a lot of trouble in at least 20 minutes of my life. Target locked. Why does the lawnmower have such a killing boner for Juliet? I mean, there are a million other things to destroy in this garden. Oh. <sighs> Jesus Christ, why is it only the f***ing mushroom that goes to check on things in this movie? This feud is over. Man, I haven't been this excited about a Maggie Smith, Michael Caine team up since 1998's Curtain Call. I remember when Iraq was young, know me or and Juliet had so much fun. Need to stretch the runtime of your cheap animated film? Nothing better than a pre-credits dance party set to Crocodile Rock. Well, except maybe the sweet release of the credits. Parting would be such sweet sweetness. The credits, the credits, my kingdom for the credits. Wait, Tybalt's still alive? After being smashed into smithereens? So why did I care about any of these dickheads dying? Holy sh dude, I know Featherstone's lonely, but a mail order bride is not the solution. means no man can cross it, all right? Ah! May I just have some coke, please? Tommy! How's the peeping? Juliet, I told you before! You're only supposed to blow the bloody doors off! <laughs> <laughs> Maniacal laugh. <laughs> Maniacal laugh. I was just trying to keep her safe. I'm so sorry. I failed you. You trusted me, and I failed you. Working nine to five. Hello. 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 Like me, it's going insane. Insane in the membrane. Insane in the brain. Your gun cannot hurt me. Can't you see? I am not human. I may not be a smart bird. But I know what love is. I wanna know what